Hello, this is Hervé from Comic Book Bin, filling you in since 2002. I've decided to try a new series of lectures and videos on action figures, theory, and practice to try to make sense of them. This is a series of video, or maybe it's only going to be one video, who knows, that I'm doing in order to make sense of action figure, which is something that I like a lot. I'm a collector, just like you, probably, but I'm also in my day job, a university professor, a scientist, a scholar. It's often fruitful and fun to use something that you're passionate about as a hobby and try to study it and make sense of it. Many scientists do that. Now, action figures have not been something that I've seen a lot of research on, and I think it's probably time we started doing it. Since I spend a lot of time making videos about action figures, why not try to use this energy and this time to advance the field of action figures or an understanding of action figures to make sense of them a bit more. But at the same time to also speak to you, the collector, and see how you feel about action figures. Is there something else that you did not know about action figures? And is this exercise something that can be fruitful for you as a collector to better understand this hobby of yours? Let's see. So this is going to be like a series of lectures like I've mentioned. So today it's going to be more of a summary of what I'm going to try to do today. Why am I interested in studying action figures as an academic? So the first question I will answer is who am I? If you follow the channel for a while, you probably have some kind of an idea. If you followed Comic Book Bin, the website for years, you will know a bit more about who am I. But I should probably introduce myself better to you so you understand where I'm coming from when I speak about action figures. Then we'll jump into why do we need an academic approach to action figures? to make sense of them. Why am I doing this for? Should we be researching action figures scholarly? Is that even serious work? Why do we even bother? Don't we already know everything we need to know about action figures? The next question will be philosophical musing. I will introduce why I'm going into philosophy mode right off the bat. We don't have to do this, but I think it might be fruitful. It might be very useful to figure out a bit more about what is an action figure in all before we go and jump into more detail detailed analysis of this whole thing, this whole hobby, this thing we call the action figure or some people call the figurine. And next, I'll be introducing social theories or speaking broadly about them. What's the difference between philosophy and social theory? I'll explain that better. Once I explain a bit more about the philosophy, you'll understand why we probably need to look at social theories next. Briefly, philosophy asks questions for which we don't really have answers. It tries to make sense of these things by bringing issues and topic. Social theory is a bit different. We are doing theory, theoretical work. We're still trying to figure out things, but we're proposing frameworks to do so. We're trying to build what I call a social theory or a social framework to understand this thing which we're interested in. So this is going to be an introduction to social theories to be looking at how we can approach action figures and try to make sense of them, but build a framework that allows us to go further in the next couple of lectures. Now, who am I? Well, my name is Hervé Saint-Louis. I'm an associate professor of emerging media at Université du Québec à Chicoutimi in the city of Saguenay in Canada. An associate professor means that I'm a middle-level prof. I'm not a junior prof, which would be an assistant prof. I'm an associate prof. I'm not a full prof, which would mean more what we call a senior prof. I'm in the middle of my career. I study emerging media, what is emerging media? It's a way of saying I study everything related to technology, media, and communication. Broadly enough, we can put more things into what we call emerging media. Since I'm an expert in what's called human-computer interaction and information policy, now human-computer interaction is a completely different branch from communications. It's a discipline that sits in the middle of computer science and information science. Emerging media, that label, allows me to put Put this work that I do with human computer interaction, which is the study of how people use technology, and put that into perspective into a communication framework. Information policy is more closely associated with communication studies usually. Information policy is part of information studies, but if you look at it from the perspective of what we call media policy, it's also a discipline in communication. Now, information policy, communication policy, they overlap. They're probably the same for some scientists. They're probably different for some others. They will veer into more specific topics 
one or the other, but you could say that information policy is the larger term that I'm using, which also includes media policy or policy analysis in the sense of we study the media and policy. So that's how government and other organization make rules about the media and so on. Information policy includes things like copyrights or intellectual property, freedom of expression or what Americans call free speech, governance in terms of the internet. How is the internet governed? Media policy in terms of television and the radio, how are they governed? There are organizations in many countries like Canada and the United States that have policies on how we can use the airwaves but also the telephone. What are the policies for telephone companies and so on? So information policy, communication policy, media policy, it's a big field. Of course, every time we study information policy, communication policy, media policy, we overlap into technology. I mean, if we study things like privacy, we want to know what are the main cause of privacy breaches. Well, technology often is. So human computer interaction and information policy are the two topics that I usually frame my research within. I will go overboard sometimes, like I'm doing today with action figures, but that's okay. You could say that the work that I'm doing with action figures touches on technology. Action figures are a form of technology. They are also a form of media. Everything that we see about them, how we discuss them, it's done on what we would call emerging media, social media websites, blogs, YouTube videos, TikToks. Thus, the work that I'm doing today can still be framed within what I would do as an emerging media scholar. Now, the city of Saguenay is just south of the 49th parallel. Many people think that it's up there, up north, very far from Quebec City. It's not, which means there are places in the United States, cities in the United States that are north of Saguenay. Saguenay is a city, mid-sized city on the river Saguenay in Quebec. It goes all the way to Lac Saint-Jean or St. John's Lake. The entire area is called the Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean or Saguenay and the Lake St. John area. The university that I'm from is called Université du Québec à Chicoutimi. It is part of a network of state universities in the province of Quebec in Canada. Now, I don't think I need to explain what Canada is. Usually, I'm better known as Toon Doctor, but when I work at Comic Book Bin, I just use Comic Book Bin. If you type Toon Doctor, you'll be able to find a lot more from me. I'm from Montreal originally, even though I'm a French-Canadian who's traveled all over the place in Canada. Now, what's what my training about? For my bachelor's degree, I had a Bachelor of Arts in History and Political Science from McGill University. That's an English-speaking university in the city of Montreal. Right after that, after I finished my bachelor's degree, I went into animation at a school that no longer exists that used to be called Ikari. I studied 2D and 3D animation. I mostly specialized in 2D animation. What is 2D? That's classic cartoons. A few years after that, I started Toon Doctor, an animation studio studio in the city of Montreal. Now, I'm not very active with Toon Doctor, but it's still there. The studio still exists, and I used to work on several projects in animation, multimedia, web development, mobile apps, and so on. Because I'm a scientist, because I'm a university professor, I don't really do contracts. I don't really do projects so much as I used to. I don't have time for that. The only time I've got is to make short videos for YouTube and so on. This why this endeavor for me, this series of lecture on action figure theory and practice, that's a big commitment for me. I'm also the publisher of comicbookbin.com. What is comicbookbin.com? It's the largest comic book website, news website in Canada with over 28,000 articles. It's a website that I created in 2002. So this website is over 20 years old right now. A lot of people have written at Comic Book Bin. There's a lot of articles in there. If you want to spend an entire afternoon trying to figure out what Comic Book Bin is, you're welcome. There are 28,000 articles. You'll have a lot of work ahead of you. I was a funding publisher. At Sometimes I stepped down a bit, but right now the website is not as active as it used to. I don't have time to steer it in that direction because I'm busy at the university where I teach, I do research, and what we call service. I've got a master's degree in strategic studies from the University of Calgary. Strategic studies, what is that? We study war and strategy, except when I did my degree, I studied cybersecurity instead. My topic of study was specifically the Iran Green Revolution, where Iranians went to Twitter to contest the presidential election results in Iran in 2009.
So I read a lot of tweets and I figured out a lot of things about how people use Twitter, which is why today I'm still a professor of emerging media. I kind of get social media a lot. Right after that, I really liked doing research. So I went on to do a PhD in information at the University of Toronto in the province of Ontario. What is information? Information is the discipline that used to be known more as library science, archives, and information science. We just call it information today, just like we would call something communication or history. We don't call it science all the time. Information is a discipline that is close to communication, but it's not the same thing. We're a bit more technical in the work that we do. We overlap a lot with communication scholars who study how people communicate. We study information in all its forms. So we're no longer just interested in a library. We're interested in information wherever it is. And a lot of information is on the web, in the internet, in technologies, which is why I'm a researcher in human-computer interaction. I study how people use technology. Now, I don't know if you know me for that, but I am the creator of a webcomic, a series of comics that's called Johnny Bullet. It's about a 1970s race car driver. It's a comic that I did while I was working on my PhD. It's a long story, about 185 strips. I had a lot of fun doing it. I don't work on animation anymore, so the comic was the only thing I could afford to do, but I still had a, a lot of fun. You can find the entire run of Johnny Bullet at comicbookbin.com. Just have to look for it. It's pretty easy to find. I'm proud of Johnny Bullet, and I'd like to do more work on that eventually. Now today's lecture will be an introduction to game toys and the articulated action figure. Yeah, why should we study action figures? Well, that's all today's lecture is about. I'm going to be speaking briefly about gaming, toys, articulated action figures as a field of study. Gaming is an established field of study already. Video games, how people play games, how people, what we call serious gaming, or even board games, are topics that are frequently studied, game studies. We we can take some of the approaches used in game studies to study toys, but often the study of toys, I suspect, will be something that is framed with a child perspective. Now, if you're an action figure collector like me, you know you're not a kid, you're an adult, which is why I'm interested in action figures right now. I'm not a kid, I still buy toys, but we like to call them articulated action figures. Why should we look at action figures? Well, there's a lot of stuff on action figures, a lot of websites and blogs. I don't believe there's a lot of academic research. I have found some, but there's not the kind of academic research on action figures that I'd like to see. Do action figures have to be articulated to count as action figures? Can they be non-articulated? We'll look at that a bit later when we ask questions about what is an action figure. So like I mentioned, it's the first lecture of several on action figures that I intend to prepare and to share here. I want to speak to you, the collector, while preparing content that I can publish or present in an academic setting context or publication in the future. You could say that I'm rehearsing, you could say that I'm investigating something that is dear to me while trying to speak with you, with the public, about this topic before I go on and speak about it with my peer, researchers, scholars. One important thing that I need to mention, while I am an emerging media prof, I'm a university professor. I am not the world expert on scholarly research on action figures. In fact, even though I'm a hardcore collector, well, I consider myself a hardcore collector of action figures, I am not a researcher whose expertise is the action figure. Everything I've done right now related to action figures has always been as a fan. I have not looked at action figures as a researcher. Thus, there's a lot of work that has probably been done before that I am not aware of. I might tomorrow discover that there's a whole discourse on what is an action figure, but right now, I haven't found it and I'm not aware of it. This is said with humility. I do not pretend to be the world expert on action figures from an academic perspective. I am not. I'm just some guy who likes action figures and figured since I know how to do research. How about if I start doing some research and investigation on action figures using scholarly approaches? That's what I'm doing right now. So if you figure out that yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about as an academic on action figures, well, I'm researching right now. I'm discovering everything as a researcher. I'm putting my new researcher hat on in order to look at action figures. I'm not usually someone who publishes about action figures. I've published about comics a lot, but I've never done any kind of work related to action figures. This is not the area of research I'm an expert in. So I'm discovering and I'm hoping that as I discover, I can share 
share my discoveries with you, but also share how researchers go about investigating new topics all the time. So you guys understand how we do research and why we do it. Well, why do we do it? Why do I do it? It's pretty easy right now. I'm an action figure collector. I like action figures a lot. So I figured, well, I'm a researcher. How about if I combine the two together? My love of research, my love of action figures. Who knows? Perfect match made in heaven. Because I'm a professor, a university professor with tenure, I can investigate topics like that. I can take the time that it takes to look at a topic without having to worry about other things. It's a freedom called academic freedom to look at a topic from different perspective and try to figure out and make sense of it and then share my results with the public and my peers in academia. It's a privilege that I take seriously. It's also fun. And that's how people start doing major work Anyway, maybe one day these musings on action figures will turn out to be a big work. I don't know. We never know about these things, how they can evolve over time. Now, why does it matter to understand action figures from an academic perspective? Well, why should we look at figures, action figures, the figurine? Are they that interesting? Are they just plastic things that grown men buy to sustain big companies and fight on YouTube and Facebook about and take nice pictures that they can put on their Instagram? What do we do that for? Do these things matter? I mean, they're not life of, or death. I mean, they're the livelihood of a lot of people, but they're not necessary for our survival. So why should we even study that? Shouldn't science be only interested in topics that actually matter for real, that are life or death? Well, no, because research, academia is interested in human human activity. I will say that the work that I'm doing right now on action figures is not pure science in the sense of I'm not doing it from a physics or chemistry approach. I'm not looking at the mechanics also of the action figure. So I'm not doing it from a toy design or an engineering perspective or even a computer science perspective. I'm doing it from a social science perspective. I'm not doing it from a philosophical approach either. I'm not asking questions in the sense of the arts and craft of action figures. Not yet, at least. So I'm not interested in the humanities part, the creative aspect of the action figures in that sense. Humanities would be something akin to philosophy, arts, design, and so on. I will always go and mix and match these things. I will probably even ask questions from an engineering perspective on action figures. I'm not an engineer, but I may have to dwell into that in the future. I, I don't know yet. I don't know if it's going to happen. Unless you do it, you never know where you're your, your research will take you. But the thing is that when we study human beings, everything that human beings are involved with is worth exploring in academia. So if I'm into making arts and craft, there are academics who study arts and craft. If I'm into podcasting, there's a lot of researchers who study podcasting. Everything we do is worth exploring in academia. Now, the fact that not many people have looked at action figures does not mean that it's not worth looking at. In fact, when something is not studied extensively, there's a lot of interest in that area. There should be a lot of studies on action figures. There might be a lot of worth wealth that we can share with the public and that I can share with my peers. We don't know yet. I don't know yet. I haven't really done a lot of the work yet. I'm still in the beginning of trying to make sense of the action figure. To give you an oversight and some context, some disciplines have made sense of, of other topics such as cinema, video games, and comics. For decades, some of them, like video games and comics, were not taken seriously. Now, film cinema was taken seriously pretty early on. But there were still a few years when cinema was not taken as seriously as other form of arts. Video games and comics did come around and now there are big conferences, journals, a lot of research done on those topics. So if no one questions the validity, the legitimacy of doing research on film, video games, and comics, why would someone question why we are looking at action figures today? The same work that was done for film, video games, comics can be done for action figures. Apparently, I'd like to be a part of that right now. I may only provide a very brief contribution, but it's something nevertheless. So how does an academic start investigating action figures scholarly? Well, often when we engage in research, and that is not something we do to the same extent in the humanities, which is a part of research, but not the same practice, is we'll start with a thesis. A thesis is a question trying to answer, in a sense, problem. I'm asking a question because there is a problem that I've spotted and I'm trying to figure out what's the deal with this. I admit right now, I don't have a thesis 
or question to action figures. A standard thesis would be, are action figures something for adult or kids only? Or action figures used and played and collected by men with social issues? Can women enjoy action figures to the same extent as men? What can we say about the economics of action figures? Or action figures, deluxe items that are only collected by rich people or people with a certain income, thereby saying that maybe poor people don't have time or the energy or the money to even acquire them. So is there a class perspective to the action figure? That would be a thesis. I'm not there yet. Not at all. I could also ask or frame an hypothesis that I would try to prove or disprove. I could have a study that looks at are only men interested in action figures and I would have to prove that. I would have to have a test with men and women. That's how we would do it. I'm not at the hypothesis stage yet in my investigation of action figures. Right now, I don't have a thesis and I don't have an hypothesis. I don't know what I should ask about action figures because I'm trying to look at them in a very holistic way. So I don't know if there's something worthwhile or something that will capture my interest as I'm trying to do this work with you. A common way to figure out what can we ask about a new phenomenon, a topic of interest, is to look at the literature that has been written about it. By literature, I mean what other research has been done by other scholars from any kind of perspective or even discipline. What has been done? What has been asked about action figures here? Now, this is not an exhaustive literature search on action figure. It is a tiny, 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 tiny literature overview. If I were to do a literature review in a regular research article, it would be more extensive than that. That doesn't mean that I would be putting more information, but it would be more targeted. Right now, doing a very brief what I would call literature review, I've looked at several topics of investigation that do address questions about action figures. Some of those topics include toy design, and I've seen quite a lot of studies from Fernandez, Eyal. Eyal means an other person. It might be one more, two more, ten more, and so on. Godwin, 2014. Lee and All, 2013. Kudowitz and All, 2010. Sanders, 2022. I've seen topics on collecting from Bryant, 2015. Rogan, 1998. About children and action figures or toys. Brainbridge, 2010. About play. Yeah, there's a whole theory about playing. It's related to game studies often, but sometimes it's not. So there's work from Brown, 2018. Dettering, 2018. Guitard and All, 2005 about action figure history. Now on this one, I haven't found as much academic work, but there is work being done from the popular press or blogs and so on. There's a lot of work on males, on guys and action figures. So there's work from Bartlett, 2000, et al, 2005, Klein et al, 2020, Pope et al, 1998, and other related issues, speaking about gender and identity. So we can find some from Oster et al, 2012, Baggers and all 2006. So there is some research done on action figures, but a lot of it is spread all over the place. My intent here is to try to make sense of it. I will be reading most of this literature to make sense of it too as it's going to guide me in my ongoing investigation of action figures. Something I should have mentioned is that when we cite those sources, we only, well, I'm using an APA format here, so I only mention the family name and the year of publication. I don't go into details about the topic, the title, the publication, where it was published at. I just go with the last name. Normally, in an academic paper, in my bibliography, you would see the whole list fully written out. I'm not going to do this kind of work here for this series of lecture. I'll do it when I'm writing those articles. Then I will cite these things completely with a full bibliography. But this is a parenthesis citation, which is enough when we speak like that lively, which means you don't know exactly what I found. You only have a name and you don't even have more than the name. You don't even have this title, but it is literature that I've been looking at anyway. It's a format that academics use. We don't necessarily put everything like that. You just have to accept that for now. Some colleagues would put in their slides the full bibliography. 
I don't want to share the biography at this point because it is work that I'm going to be writing on. So once this work is written out and published, then people will have full access to all of the stuff that I've done. So how can I start understanding action fears? Well, so far, like I've mentioned, I haven't found one single comprehensive work or a series of comprehensive works on action figures. Everything is spread out in different topics. Again, it does not mean that there is no such comprehensive work that exists. There might be just exactly what I'm looking for, but it's not there. So right now, it's still part of what I would call the gap in my research. And the gap is usually what you try to answer. But since I don't have a thesis or even an hypothesis, it's not a gap that is geared towards a proper research format just yet, because I don't know what question I'm asking. I do believe and I do think that there is not a comprehensive series of work on action figures that makes sense of them from A to Z. I don't believe that there are such articles or even books around. There might be some on videos and there might be a lot of history, but history is just one part of action figure knowledge. It's not the entire perspective on action figures. Now, what I found above is work on action figures as toys in terms of design, in terms of collecting them, in terms of gender issues with male and gender identity, how children play, action figure history, play in general, and so on. My attempt is to contribute something that is worthwhile to understanding action figures. In a sense, you could say that I do have a thesis as one question that I've been repeating thus far is how do we understand action figures comprehensively? That is, how do we understand action figures from A to Z or holistically? How do we understand everything that there is to be understood about action figures? How do we even create a framework to look at action figures? This could be a thesis. It's close to what I want to do, obviously, and I think that I would like to do in the series of lecture. How do you understand the action figure comprehensively? When I mention that there is a gap in the literature, that's often what we do. We say, well, no one has written about this this way. So what can we say about this topic? And this question or this problem becomes the actual thesis because there's a gap. But so far, like I mentioned, I can't say that it is a gap because I haven't looked at everything that's been done on action figures from a scholarly approach. So I can't claim that just yet. It would be facetious to do so. But there is a way to understand action figures. There is something that I can do to contribute to the discussion of what action figures are from a scholarly perspective. And it seems that my interest is the comprehensive understanding of action figures. So often, how do we do that? Well, we start with philosophy and then we follow that with social theory. But before I go further into that, I can already say that my objective here is to figure out what action figures are. But one of my missions, as I do this, I want to do it for both non-academics like you and academics. I would like you, the non-academic, to understand how academics go about looking at a topic to figure it out slowly and so on till we can actually publish research or present our research to our peers and then the public. What's fun about doing this work right now is that there is an audience for this in a sense that there are a lot of action figure collectors. Now, not all of you are interested in academia and those kinds of questions. But if there's anything worthwhile that I'll find, I'll share it here. So philosophy is often the first step when we don't know what we're doing. Don't be afraid with the word philosophy. I know I've scared half of you already. Philosophy is how we understand the world, how we question what the world is. We don't know. We don't have to obtain answers. That's what social theory is about. Social theory gives us more frame answers to our larger musing from philosophy. From social theory, we can build theses and hypotheses about action figures, about a topic, and try to shape a theoretical framework that allows us to understand the topic we're looking at. But starting with philosophy allows us to ask a lot of larger questions about action figures or whatever other topic we're looking at. We don't have to delve into philosophy, but I believe here because I just don't know what an action figure is as an academic. As a collector, I know, but as an academic, I do not know what an action figure is. So this is where relying on philosophy is very useful right now. So the philosophy of the action figure. Philosophy, like I just mentioned, is a useful starting point to ask general questions about a phenomenon we seek to understand. It doesn't mean that we're going to get the answer, but just asking questions creates 
its knowledge about what we're trying to figure out. It allows us to better frame what we're trying to understand about action figures. Now, there are many parts of philosophy that can help us do this. So don't be afraid of the terms that I'm going to be using next. They're not meant to be scary, but they're terms that have been used for centuries, for millennia. There are different parts in philosophy that allow us to get some kind of understanding. I'm interested in action figures from a social perspective, which means it's a scientific endeavor, which is why I'm not going to ask metaphysical question about action figures. What is metaphysics? Well, metaphysics asks question about God existence. Is the action figure necessary for human beings to exist on this planet? Did some kind of deity from a different world, a dimension, a multiverse, bring the action figure to us one day and said, worship this toy? That's what metaphysics is about. I'm not engaged in metaphysics here. Instead, I'm going to be using two other philosophical approaches that are very on point when I want to look at action figures. The first one is ontology. What is ontology? Well, it's the philosophy of the nature of things. The basic question that we would ask from an ontological perspective is, what is an action figure? What is action figure collecting? Why do people collect action figures? Do action figures need to be articulated? Do they need at least five points of articulation to be deemed action figures? Do they need props, vehicles, play sets to be deemed action figures? Or are they only played by men or boys? What differentiate an action figure from a doll? Aren't action figure doll rebranded for boys and men? That's ontology. I'm asking questions about the philosophy, about the nature of things. Epistemology is the second approach to try to figure out what an action figure is. I've done a little bit of that when I did my literature review, asking about the knowledge, what do we know about action figures? That's epistemology, the philosophy of knowledge. What do we know about action figures? Well, we know they're bought by collectors. They're bought by parents too. They're bought and played by kids. What else do we know? They're often made of plastic or some kind of material related to plastic. They're often mass produced. Why? Because there's not just one individual item, artifact. There's several of them. So when I have a shipwreck action figure from G.I. Joe Classify, you can have one too, which means I can play with my copy, but you can also play with yours. You can display it in a box. I can unwrap it, put it on a desk. So it means that people can play with these or they can use them as decoration. Oh, so we don't have to actually play with an action figure. No, we don't. That's what epistemology does. It allows us to ask questions about what do we know about action figures? Well, we know that people collect them. Sometimes they unbox them. Sometimes they don't. We know that originally kids played with action figures, but adults are playing with them more and more. We know that some action figures are not meant for children. They're meant for adults. They have parts that are very spiky, that could break easily. So they're meant for collectors who will be more careful with them. Other action figures are meant to go in the backyard, be buried, thrown against the wall, put in the bathtub. They'll resist, but not not all action figures are built this way. Most of them are built out of plastic, but is an action figure built out of wood or another composite material an action figure? That would be more ontology where we ask the question, does an action figure need to be made of plastic to be an action figure? Another approach that we will probably use in a different lecture, I think it's a bit too much for today, would be what we call phenomenological approach to action figures. Phenomenology is another branch of philosophy. It's more contemporary it's newer, but often when we start using phenomenological approaches, it's easier to frame that into a research project, to get a thesis, get an hypothesis out of that. What is phenomenology? Briefly, I don't want to go into details. It's we question everything we know about something. We just assume that we should not take for granted what we think we know about action figures and try to remove all those layers as if it was an onion and peel away everything we think we know and start from scratch without any a priori perspective or idea about what we're looking at. This 
is not an easy exercise. This is something graduate students often do more than even bachelor students. And perhaps I will try to do this with you, but not today. If I do that today, I'm going to lose you. So what are some questions we can ask about the ontology of the action figure? Well, what is a figure? Do figures need to be about people? What about Zabu? He's an animal. Is Zabu not an action figure? So I guess action figures can be about people, but also animals. But what about if I have a robot with six legs who doesn't really look like a human? Is that an action figure? Well, I guess so. So action figures can be about people, animals, or other creatures or things. It doesn't have to be a representation of a human being. An action figure can be about something that apparently can move. Do they need to be articulated? Maybe, maybe not. Can I have an action figure of a dragon that only has five point of articulations at the neck and the four limbs and maybe the tail for six articulation? Is that an action figure or is that a statue? Are action figures meant to be decorations or are they meant to be played with? Are they meant to be collected or is just one action figure good enough? What separates the action figure from the puppet, the figurine or the doll? The figurine, the classic word figurine meant small statue that would not move. So is an action figure different from a figurine, from a doll? Why do we say that dolls are for girls and women? What if we dress or action figures. Is that not a doll? What about a puppet? Often action figures are articulated. We can even make stop motion animated films with them. Is that not what puppets do? What if I can control my action figures like those new Transformers action figures that transform on their own with a voice command? See Optimus transform and he transforms. Is that not a puppet or is that still an action figure? Where does one becomes the other and so on? What about size? Are action figures smaller than dolls? or smaller? What about that Optimus Prime I just described? What if it's 18 inches? What if it's very tall? Is that still an action figure? What if it's the human size? Is that still an action figure or is that something else? Are they always made of plastic? Are they always reproduced in several numbers? Like are there always like at least hundreds of action figures? I've also skipped the automaton. The automaton is a concept used for robotics. It's something that animates on its own but it's not a robot per se. It doesn't have thought, it doesn't think for its own. It just does things, just like those old watches or clocks where you would have two dancing characters doing a script that's an automaton. We had them previously. Is an action figure an automaton? When I say Megatron transformed to that gigantic automated action figure of Megatron and the one about Optimus Prime and the other one about Grimlock, are they not automaton? Or action figures always produce through industrial processes? Can I make a small run of action figures that I print at home and make just one or two copies of it? What about cars, play sets, and so on? Are they related to action figures or are they different? What about the props? Are action figures always compatible with vehicles and play sets? Or I don't need them for the action figures to be. But is my car or my play set even an action figure? Clearly my car is not an action figure. But my action figure can use the car. I can insert it in the car, in a tank, in a jet, in a boat. So surely that vehicle is an action figure, is it not? What about the playset? If I have Castle Grayskull or the Cantina in Star Wars, is that playset not an action figure? Is this something that we should be understanding separately from the action figure or should it be part of the action figure? Now, who plays with action figures? Who collects them? What do we know about that? Do action figures need to be played with or can they be displayed on a shelf? Can they stay in package? Who buys these things? Who collects them? Can we say that kids also collect them or only adults? Does that even matter as a question? This is the ontology. We don't need to answer those questions per se, but just musing and trying to expand what we know about action figures, about their nature, helps us frame our investigation on what is an action figure and what do we know about the action figure in you know, the word ontology and epistemology once again. The epistemology of the action figure asks question about what do we know about action figures? Where can we find stuff about action figures? Who talks about action figures? Is this something that's related to kids, adults, about their behavior and practices? Or is that something we can look outside of that? How does understanding kids and action figures help us understand the collector? Do we even need 
need to go there? Do collectors play with their action figures or is play something that's reserved for kids? Now, if collectors don't play, what do they collect? Is just pausing your action figures and taking picture with them play? Or is that something else? Does play mean that I have to actually have my characters and play on, with them on my table or on, or on the ground and put them into battles and so on? Or is play something else here? Do we always need to look at the child in order to understand the action figure? Sure, they were meant for kids at first, but do we need to go further than that to understand the action figure? Part of my philosophical musing have already jumped into what we would call social theory as I'm trying to frame this thing which is called the action figure and understanding it. I already know that I want to look at the action figure from a social perspective as something that human beings play, collect and use and so on. I am not an engineer so trying to understand it from the perspective of how they're engineered, how they're built might be really interesting in the future but it's not going to tell me about who plays, who uses uses action figures, who sells action figures, who builds action figures. It's only going to tell me about how they're made. That would be an ontological question. But I'm interested in the comprehensiveness of action figures, and I don't have an answer for that, which is why I'm still going to stay in the realm of social sciences, social theory, to build knowledge about a phenomenon and try to find a way to frame my understanding as I investigate and try to prove or disprove what I think an action figure is. In social sciences, there are major disciplines such as economics. I could try to explain the action figure from an economic perspective. I could look at companies that make action figures. At the market, Hasbro, McFarlane, Jada, how do they market? How do they create those products? What about those action figures that we can't find? the scarcity. For example, I can't find the G.I. Joe classified ferret with the scout. I was too late in buying it. How can economics help me to understand what happened that night when that vehicle was offered and I waited a few hours and by the time I try to purchase them from my shopping cart, they were sold out. Is there an economic perspective that can help me understand how scarcity make people buy action figures? How FOMO, the fear of missing out, can help me understand action figures. Economics, as you can see, can bring a lot of understanding into action figures and where do they come from, who buys them, why do they buy them, how they're sold, traded. What about the secondary market, eBay? If I can't find my G.I. Joe classified ferret with Scout, do I need to turn to eBay or Asian stores in order to get it and pay a markup? That's what economics can tell me about action figures. Political science, as funny as it seems, can also help me here. Political science might tell me about the markets in the sense of who creates those products. Are they all produced in China? Well, now we know that a lot of them are produced in Vietnam. They're not often produced in North America. Why is that? Is there an economic policy? Economics comes back. It's often mixed with political science. What can I understand about the world that I'm in? About what can that tell me about action figures? Or action figures representative of dominant culture in a sense that they promote certain ideologies in collecting in collectors? Do they promote strong men? Do they promote warlike cultures? Is that something that I can use to argue that my society is better than the other one, better organized? Why are they not action figures of the October Guards in G.I. Joe Classified. That's the Russian group that appears in the comics and on cartoons often. Would that be a problem if Hasbro made an action figure of the October Guards right now? Probably. What can political science tell me about this? Communication. A lot of the work I've done so far is within communication and by extent information in terms of the media about action figures. Are there ads for action figures in regular magazines, in a newspaper, on TV, or the radio? No. So what's the primary media we use to get our information about action figures these days? The web, blogs, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Why are action figures so far from the rest of the world? 
world? Why can't I find anything about action figures on television communications? Anthropology is the study of culture in societies. Anthropology is one discipline we can definitely use to understand action figures. I'm not an anthropologist, unfortunately. I'm an information scientist. But anthropology can tell us a lot about collecting, about play, the value we give to those action figures. Anthropology would be looking mostly, we could say, at the user, those people who have action figures, be they adults or kids. It could also tell us about those people that make action figures, those people that create custom action figures too. Why do they do those custom action figures? Why do they make them? Why do we take photography, pictures of action figures and display it and put it on social media? Here we would be bridging with communication, but anthropology can tell us a lot about the culture of collecting. Why do I need to collect more? What is army building? Why do I need more than one soldier? Isn't one enough? Why do I need to represent an army with several copies of the same character in my collection? Anthropology can tell us about the culture. Also psychology, sociology tells about the structures and organization of a society. What can we say about the organization of our society that helps us collect action figures? Well, we know that they're organized in the sense that they're still in retail markets. They're also sold on large websites like Amazon. They're sold with what they call fan channels and so on. And they're also sold by producers. Their action figures are organized in that sense. They're a product category also different from dolls. They're mostly male products. But is that really so? What about Shira? Is Shira a doll or is Shira an action figure? Psychology tells us about the individual that builds an action figure, that customizes it, that buys, that plays that collects it or leave it in a box, never to open it. Psychology can help us understand why people buy action figures and never open the boxes. These are all perspectives that I could have used and I can still use them and I will probably use them as I investigate action figures. But I have to make a choice here and I'm gonna be using something that I'm familiar with, like every social scientist. Here I'm gonna be using play and game theories. Now play and game theories are a series of perspective that cross several disciplines such as information, communication, anthropology, sociology, economics, and political science. It's a perspective that we can use to investigate the issue. Now, I've taught classes on games. It's something I'm familiar with. I was trained for that. So it's normal for me to start my investigation with play and game theories, which I've learned as a graduate student, as a PhD student. I use a lot of those. We use them in human computer interaction mostly, but we also use them when we investigate actually video games. So this is something I'm familiar with. And thus, this is the starting point for me here. It's familiar to me and I'm trained for that. So a lot of the work I'll be doing related to action figures will often start with play and game theories. Now I said I wouldn't go too far in that because I think we've got enough material for one lecture. So I'll stop it at that for today and I'll have to think a little bit more about what I'm intending to do next. But so far this has been fascinating for me. Just this musing today, thinking about speaking with you, introducing you to my world, the world of the researcher, but introducing a topic we all like. Well, if you're here, we like this topic. We like action figures. I love them too. You know that. But to think about them in this way is brand new to me and probably for you. I'd like to say thank you for you being here today to listen to this podcast, to this lecture, this university lecture. I'm interested in your feedback for real. Was I too theoretical? Did you even understand? and half of the things I was saying today. This, for me, would be a regular lecture. This is the level I would be discussing it in class with undergraduate students trying to teach them about a topic. It could be a real university course. It's what I do for a living. I'm sorry. It was fun, and I'm going to have to do even more work in the future to try to explain the game and the play theories that I'm interested in into making sense of action figures. Just understand that those game theories, a form of social theory, are part of social sciences, which is also a branch of larger sciences. It's a tool, it's a framework, it's a way for academics to understand the world around them. So this is Hervé from Comic Book Bin. Like and subscribe. Please leave your feedback about what I've done today. I'm really interested in knowing if this is of interest to you or if no one will even listen or care about this. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe and see you next time.